Okay boys, so what I'm going to show you today is how to read a synoptic chart and what all those lines and squiggles and things mean. And once you know that, you know you'll be able to hopefully by the end of this to, to predict the weather. Okay, so on my left and on your left, with what I'm circling right now, is a synoptic chart. And on my right is a satellite image. So I'm going to show you a few of them and it's good to have them side by side for you to understand uh, what's happening. This is real time with satellite image. Okay, so this is Thursday, the 1st of March. Okay, and it goes for three hours. You can get this on Bureau of Meteorology. I'm going to stop at about 6 o'clock. Or maybe I'll go back to 5 p.m. Okay, I'm going to go 5 p.m. because this is the time the synoptic chart was from. So you can see here it says 5 p.m. Okay, so let's look at our synoptic chart. Um, we can see that there's just there's a variety of different lines on here, but the most important one that I want to point out right now is an isobar. So this black line, this black unbroken line, it's called an isobar. An isobar measures uh, places of equal pressure. So here it says 1012, so that's 1,012 hectopascals. And so on this line, anywhere along this line, it's 1,012 hectopascals. Anywhere along this line, if I follow it, well, that's a bit of a failure because it doesn't actually have the number. But I know here's 1012, here's 1004, so it shouldn't be the number in between, so it's 1008. Okay, so this is 1008 hectopascals. So anything along this line is 1008 hectopascals. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to know. And you would know from previous lessons that the closer the isobars are, the stronger the winds. So the closer the isobars, the stronger the winds. And the winds in general like um, to move anti-clockwise around the high and clockwise around the low in the southern hemisphere. It's different in the northern hemisphere. Okay, so these H's, they stand for a high pressure system. So it's the places of highest pressure in the local area. Okay, and winds in the high pressure move away, they descend, it's cool, dry wind. So it's dry weather. This is what we expect from here. And they're descending and they're moving away. Okay. And in general, they move towards the low pressure system. So here in New Zealand, we have a low. We also have some lows um, in the northern part of Australia, but I want to particularly point out this one. Okay. So this is the lowest low in the northern part. All right. So these lows, you should remember from previous classes, this is where the wind is moist and warm and it rises, okay, it expands and it rises. And when you have moist, warm air expanding and rising, you usually get clouds, you get cloud coverage. So that's what's happening in a low. And remember, it's moving in a clockwise direction, the winds, okay. If we look here, this special line here, you might not have seen that before, but that's called a cold front. This blue line is cold front. And a cold front, not all synoptic charts have, have colours, but a cold front is uh, symbolised by a line with pointy, with triangles, okay, with triangles. And uh, a cold front is cold, okay, it's cold, dense air. And what it does is cold, dense air replaces warm air, which is on this side. It's moving in this direction, which is pointed to um, by the arrow. Okay, so a cold air mass replaces warm air. This is what we call a warm front. So this is the opposite. So we have warm air moving and it's replacing cold air. Okay, so warm air replacing cold air. It's the red line and you've got the bumps, not the spikes the bumps for a warm front. Um, okay, so these cold fronts in the southern hemisphere come from the South Pole. They usually come from the south and they generally move from a west to east direction. Okay, and the 
Final thing to point out is this broken blue line. This broken blue line, it's nice, it's all across Australia. Okay, so this broken blue line is called a low pressure trough. It's not a low pressure system, it's a low pressure trough. And the low pressure trough it means there's an atmospheric disturbance and usually with this there's some light cloud cover even rain can be associated with this low pressure trough okay so let's look at our map on this side okay and let's look at our synoptic chart and what you can see is that here in the low pressure system we're getting clouds okay so it corresponds nicely low pressure system clouds now The um, what we have here is we have a cold pressure system. Oh, we have a low pressure trough going across Australia, and you can see that this low pressure trough follows this strange curvy pattern, and the cloud cover of Australia follows a similar low curvy pattern. Okay, and in the high areas where there's none of these low pressure troughs, okay, we have clear areas. Now, yesterday or today, you'll be watching this the day after. Um, today in Sydney, there was this line. It was actually here earlier at 11 o'clock, and that's when we got cloud cover. So you would have been able to see it if you're watching this on the 1st of March. Um, you might be watching this weeks later you would have been able to see that. Okay, um, I just want to press play on this, so watch this satellite viewer. Okay, so look at this cloud and this low pressure system. Okay, it's sunset, that's why Australia's becoming dark. But here's this low on this side, and here's the low here. Okay, and you can see that it's moving in a clockwise direction. So the clouds are moving in a clockwise direction. You can see it there. You can also see it near New Zealand where this low is. You can see the clouds are moving in a clockwise direction. Okay, but in near the high, you can see that these clouds are moving uh, in an anti-clockwise direction, okay? Because around a high, winds move in an anti-clockwise direction. If we look at this wind map, and the cloud cover, it's a similar thing, similar to this map. But you also can see the winds. You can see it's moving clockwise around the low and anti-clockwise around the high. Oh, I moved that. Okay, so that should help you today uh, in predicting the weather. So you're going to have to use some synoptic charts um, for the next four days and predict the weather. Good luck, boys.